and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the nuclear model of atomic structure. You should then be able to describe how the nuclear model was adjusted by the discoveries of electron energy levels, the proton and the neutron. In the last video, we saw that an early model of atomic structure was called the plum pudding model. However, the results of the alpha scattering experiment led to this being replaced by the nuclear model of atomic structure. In the nuclear model, most of an atom is simply empty space. In the centre, we've got a positive nucleus, and that contains most of the mass of the atom. Around the edge, we find negative electrons. Now, we know that the nuclear model is correct, but in the years following the nuclear model, further discoveries were made, and that caused the model to be adjusted. So let's look at these now. Now, we've already seen that the electrons are found on the edge of the atom. The scientist Niels Bohr proposed that electrons orbit the nucleus at specific distances rather than just in a general area. Bohr's proposal was accepted because it agreed with the results of experiments by other scientists. We now call the orbits energy levels or shells. So here's the updated nuclear model with the electrons orbiting in energy levels. Several years later, scientists carried out experiments that showed that the positive charge in the nucleus is due to tiny positive particles, which they call protons. So here's the nuclear model with the protons in the nucleus. Now around 20 years after the nuclear model was first proposed, the scientist James Chadwick made one final important discovery. Chadwick discovered that the nucleus also contains neutral particles, which he called neutrons. So here's the final version of the nuclear model with the neutrons in the nucleus. I'm showing you here the structure of the element helium. And this brings us to one key fact about atoms. Atoms have got no overall charge. That's because the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons. This means that the positive charges on the protons are cancelled by the negative charges on the electrons. Now one thing you're meant to know is the sizes of the different parts of an atom. So let's look at these now. Firstly, the radius of an atom is around 0.1 nanometers. That's also written as 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Obviously, some atoms are larger than others, so that's an approximate figure. The radius of the nucleus is less than 1 ten thousandth the radius of the atom at about 1 times 10 to the minus 14 meters. Remember that nearly all the mass of the atom is found in the nucleus. And I should point out that the image I'm showing you here is not to scale. We're going to finish now by looking at the charges and masses of protons, neutrons and electrons. This often comes up in exams, so you need to learn this. So we'll start by looking at the relative charges. The words relative charge means the charge of one particle compared to another particle. Remember that protons have got a relative charge of positive 1. Neutrons are neutral, so they've got a relative charge of 0. Electrons have a relative charge of negative 1. Looking at the relative masses, we can see that both protons and neutrons have a relative mass of 1. That tells us that protons and neutrons have the same mass. Electrons are much smaller. You don't need to know the exact relative mass of electrons, but you can say very small in the exam. Be careful with relative masses and charges. It's very easy to confuse them. Remember, you'll find lots of questions on this topic in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the nuclear model of atomic structure. You should then be able to describe how the nuclear model was adjusted by the discoveries of electron energy levels, the proton and the neutron.